For the past few modules, we've been talking about different control structures. And the entire idea, again, was that these structures allow us to sort of uh, make unique uh, decisions about where we go in memory. So something like a function was telling us, oh, we need a small program that sits in memory somewhere that we occasionally call upon. Then we talked about the idea of maybe I need branching paths where I only want something to happen occasionally given some criteria, and we call those conditionals. And then finally, we had something called loops because I don't want to type a lot. I want to make it do it as... It, I need something to loop and do a bunch of things a bunch of times. But we're going to shift gears and then move back into something called data types. And the entire idea is, if you think about it, we've been dealing with data types the entire time. Ints, floats, booleans, strings, each one of those are data types. But one of the most powerful types of data are objects. And really now what we're doing is we're going to take these control structures and see what we can do inside of programming with different types of data types. So objects, what are they? The biggest thing, again, $15 words all around, but the biggest idea to an object, think of them like a noun. If, for example, you, you are a student, right? And I'm now going to objectify you. No, what I mean by that is, well, you know, as a student, uh, you're going to have some associated values to you. So you have something like a first name. You maybe have a last name. Most of you, I'm going to assume, are going to have a last name. You're not one of the people who just have a single uh, name. Uh, you're going to have an address associated to you. You probably have a date of birth associated to you. All of those could be considered values that you in fact uh, store to yourself but they are unique to yourself there is someone who may have may have the same first name but they are not you uh, they even may have the same first and last name uh, and date of birth but you know hopefully they don't also live with you that would just be super weird but again they are not you right well that's where we start to think about something like an object's identity and for our sake it's realistically just the variable name so you uh, as a student I'm going to call you s1 you've been objectified and reduced down to two characters as the way I'm going to refer to you for the rest of this uh, video uh, so s1 again you have first name you have a last name you have these things that we like to call states and the entire idea to a state is just this big uh fancy generic term for the properties of you so again you have some first name and again it didn't have to be uh you know first space name because i can have variables named however i like them so i typically like to name uh it something like f name and it could be something like i don't know a string. I don't know why I put an E there, but assume the E's gone. It's not Ademe. Uh, but I could also have an L name for my last name. And I'm not putting my address on here, but you could assume that there are different things that I could uh, add to this. So maybe instead, just to keep it simple, we could give it a uh, variable uh, age that tells you an integer number so in this case I'm 36 but that's the same with all types of objects so if I was dealing with something like a circle this is a circle or close enough to one and that circle is gonna have an R attached to it well this is also close enough to a circle <laughs> let's see that's C2 that is C1 Again, C1 has an R. C2, being a circle, would also have its own R associated to it. And so again, this is 
uh, a property to the individual objects. That's where we start to get into the behaviors or methods or functions, again, interchangeable words here. But the entire idea is if we're thinking about these two different circles, you know, C1 has its R, and then uh, C2, much bigger, but still going to have its R. Again, those are just the states of it. But I could create or have access to different functions that are associated to uh, C1 and C2, uh, like get radius, change the radius, so in this case set radius to 7, or I could use the, uh, the state of R, the value of R, to create my own functions as well. So something like get area, and then, you know, that would be pi r squared. And since I know what r is, I know what pi is, and I know what squared is, I could merge those three elements together and I could get a different value of get area for c1 and then a different value for c2. Same kind of thing since we're dealing with students. Maybe not every student at NC State uh, is registered for CSC 111. Well, guess what? We could have a function associated to every student called register course and then we would just pass in a parameter like csc 111 and now they are registered for this course so how do we register a student for a course that is where we get into something known as the dot operator a period and the entire idea is you effectively use your variable name or identity to be fancy again with it, dot, and then whatever method you want to have associated to this. And so in this case, you know, I have a get ID, and well, if we're just thinking about this as you have an ID, it's associated, it's a technically a state. Again, that would be, you know, interactions. But if we did something like the C1 dot get area, and for our sake, let's just say that uh, this C1, its R was 10 because that's easy math for me. Uh, so what is that? That would produce out 3.14 dot 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 times uh, 100. So roughly speaking, an area of 314. Again, this is being referenced very specifically, or being accessed rather, by something called the dot operator. 